Welcome to another video, a video on Lokicha Lam crude oil pipeline project. And before we continue, I invite you to subscribe to this channel and also hit the notification bell so that whenever we upload a new video, you are notified. So uh, today we are going to look at a project which is being constructed in Kenya or which is being implemented in Kenya for the purposes of evacuating oil from the uh, oil fields all the way to the Lamu port, the, new, the newly constructed uh, facility for the purposes of exporting the oil to overseas market. So looking at the background of Kenyan oil discovery, it was commercially uh, extractable oil were discovered in 2012 in Lokisha Basin, which is in Trukana County, uh, northwestern Kenya. So British oil firm Talo Oil estimates that the basin has an estimated 560 million barrels in proven and probable reserves. But since then, the country has struck 750, I mean 750 million uh, barrels of commercially viable oil. And ongoing exploration show that this amount may increase to over 1 billion barrels. So for purpose of uh, evacuating this oil to the market, there is one infrastructure that can make this uh, commodity uh, more commercially viable. So a crude oil pipeline is being constructed for these purposes to allow the transportation of this oil from Lokisha Basin to Lamu port for export. The pipeline will be 821 kilometers long and it is expected to have a maximum capacity of 80,000 barrels uh, of oil per day to cut, cut across several uh, counties started and starting at Trukana, Samburu, Isiolo, Meru, Garissa, Tana River and terminating at Lamu Port in Lamu County. So this project will help Kenya evacuate its oil from uh, Trukana in Lokisha Basin all the way to the newly constructed port of Lamu. So there are several infrastructure that are going to be built for the purposes of this evacuation and we are going to see what or which these infrastructures uh, will be built for this purpose. So this project is part of the LAPSET program, the LAPSET corridor, which is uh, uh, stands for Lamu Port South Sudan Ethiopia Transport Corridor. And this is uh, part of the Kenya Vision 2030 strategy, which is a national long-term development policy, which aims that at transforming the country into a newly industrialized and middle income country. So this program has several uh, projects, including uh, the Lamu port. We have the a highway running all the way from Lamu to South Sudan, and then branching off at Isiolo to Ethiopia. Then we have an SGR which follows the same route. We have a fiber optic uh, cable running through the same corridor. We have a standard gauge railway uh, following the same corridor. We have in the in in, the, in several uh, places there will be some facilities such as an airport in Isiolo, an international airport in Isiolo, which has already been constructed. We have uh, holiday resorts along the corridor. So already uh, there is a 500 meter wide corridor that has been set aside 
and this will accommodate all the infrastructure projects including the pipeline that is being uh, proposed so the pipeline project will require a 26 meter wide right of way and uh, for the purposes of construction and uh, there will be a permanent six meter wide is easement for po operations during the life of the project so in addition to the land which is required for this project or this temporary construction of facilities there are a number of installations that will be done above ground installations uh, which will be along the pipeline for the purposes of uh, allowing a smooth flow of the product the pipeline will be buried so that means uh, there will be no interruption from uh, animals and also from human it will also be uh, have a heating capacity uh, because the kenyan oil is waxy and viscous for it to flow, flow easily uh, to, it requires to be heated so there will be several heating pas uh, facilities along the way uh, as we speak a pipeline project management team has already been constituted uh, it is managing the development of this project on behalf of the joint development agreement parties so these parties include the government of kenya which is here represented by the ministry of petroleum and mining we have the talo oil kenya we have african oil african oil trucana and uh, uh, total ep international as far as this project description is concerned the project is designed to provide transportation storage and export facilities for this crude oil which is produced uh, in south Lokisha bc and processed at the central processing facility in the same place and it will be transported all the way to a loading out facility at the lamb marine terminal which is located in the newly constructed lamb port so the pipeline will be heated and insulated to maintain the oil at a temperature which maintains its optimal flow characteristics. Remember, we are saying that this oil is waxy and fixed fiscus, and for the purpose and for it to be able to flow easily, it has to be heated. The pipeline will be buried and will cover a distance of 824 uh, kilometers in terms of length. It will be made of a uh, 18 inch diameter carbon steel coated with anti-corrosion layer and will also be insulated with foam as well as having an outer resistant protection coating and this will make the overall external diameter to be 24 inches so the minimum depth of these as we have said will be buried minimum depth will be 0 0.9 meters but in areas which are rocky this depth will be reduced to 0 0.6 meters so there are also going to be some several uh, above ground installations uh, which will be installed at, uh, at specific locations along the route and they include the pressure reduction stations, power stations among other facilities which are, uh, which are to allow oil to, or to support the whole project. So the key design parameters of the project will include uh, the project having a life, a design life of 25 years. That's the period that it is the oil reserves in uh, Trukana are expected to last. And are, as you have said earlier, it will have a evacuation capacity of 65,000 to 80,000 barrels per day. So what is the project status as we speak? Uh, already. Uh, feed has been completed the design has been completed also the land where the pipeline will pass the 500 meters corridor which is supposed to accommodate all the lapset uh, infrastructure projects have already been gazetted but the project has not been given a go ahead as far as use of land is concerned they have to compensate the land and that might take some time that that might be one of the reasons as to why uganda opted to use another route because land compensation issues uh, take long time to be resolved 
uh, environmental social impact assessment has been done it has already been submitted to national environment management that was done in november 2019 so currently the report is being uh, reviewed and uh, they are undertaking the public participation where they are collecting views from various uh, parties and also uh, if there are areas that need to be changed that's that's that's, that's currently happening so the pipeline project uh, team is also undertaking uh, some activities as, as as they await the approval of the environmental impact assessment so the engineering procurement and construction management contractor is being sought uh, for the purposing of starting various activities so all the technical and permitting activities are being done uh, and most of them have not been completed final investment decision is yet to be made so they are waiting approval uh, to to uh, to seek for funds uh, which will be used for the purposes of constructing this project so some questions have been asked uh, regarding this project and its viability and uh, one of the questions is should kenya go ahead with this project given that there's some uh, since the this oil was discovered a lot has happened and this might have changed the commercial viability of this oil for example there is a transition that has happened to greener energy so most most countries or most jurisdictions are, are for adoption of greener energy if it happens that this uh, happens and it happens quickly what will be the commercial viability of this oil will it be it would be uh would be advisable to go ahead with the project especially when most of the people switch to greener energy that means the prices of oil will go down and uh having injected a lot of money in this kind of a project and remember this is not the only project to make this oil commercially viable there are other projects that are needed so a lot of resources are needed to complete this project and the life uh, span is only 25 years. So this is something to think about. Uh, there's also commitment to Paris Agreement, which is supposed to uh, address the issues of uh, climate change, where countries are supposed to commit themselves to reducing uh, emission of carbon and such that there will be a reduction of 1.5 to 2.5 uh, degrees Celsius and also subsequent, uh, subsequent uh, achieving the net zero emission. And given that fossil fuels are the greatest car carpets, going ahead with this kind of a project will increase usage of fossil fuels and increasing the country's carbon footprint. And that will derail uh, the efforts to move towards green energy. Volatility of oil prices is another reason that has, has been quoted. Oil prices have been fluctuating. There was a time the prices were so low such that the amount that can be extracted from this, this oil, if at all it was sold, uh, would not make uh, economic sense. There's also the issue of finances financiers avoiding fossil fuel projects so financing of fossil fuel projects mostly involves borrowed capital and to be very difficult in future for for any country or for for any uh, company to acquire these funds because uh, financiers are avoiding such kind of projects they are they are moving towards financial financing of green uh, energy projects so it would be very hard if, if kenya opts to borrow for the purposes of building this project they are going to find it very hard because not many uh, financial institutions are financing such kind of projects 
so it's, it's it's important to think if the if the country goes ahead with the project then they have to look for funds uh, elsewhere if this project was to be realized uh, then the environmental impact that this project has to be passing in some areas which are very sensitive some areas which have uh, endangered species in terms of plants and animals so uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the project involving a lot of uh, excavation uh, these uh, species might be affected so Kenya is being given an option of uh, building a joint pipeline with Uganda remember this was the initial plan but Uganda withdrew from the Kenyan route citing several reasons uh, the cost the environmental uh, factors the security factors and also such uh, strategic reasons so Uganda opted to go to uh, to Tanzania where they are currently building a pipeline from the Uganda uh, oil fields all the way to a uh, uh, to Tanga port so Kenya is giving being given that option of partnering, partnering with Uganda to build a joint pipeline uh, which will pass through Uganda so with this option Kenya will only need to construct a pipeline from the oil fields to the uh, to Hoima where the Uganda uh, pipeline starts and then um, they make arrangements on how the oil can be transported uh, through Tanzania so this option will, will involve uh, 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 getting into negotiation uh, but this is already too late because the, the East African crude oil pipeline which is owned by Uganda and Tanzania and other financiers uh, it has already kicked off and Kenya coming in will be too late and it might and, and uh, it might bring some complications but this is an option that the country can explore uh, because it will avoid so many issues including environmental and also the huge amount of cost that may come with this uh, project so the uh, another option is to do away with the project altogether and forget about the oil but this is not a very uh, popular decision because oil can bring some income to Kenya uh, despite uh, but they have to be a way of balancing between environment and uh, economy so this is a project that is being constructed in Kenya it has not started uh, it is in its preliminary stages uh, financial decision has not been made uh, what is happening is that uh, approvals are being sought with one of them being environmental impact assessment uh, which is currently at advanced stage so we'll continue with the review of such projects and uh, in a later video we are going to compare between the Kenyan uh, pipeline and Ugandan pipeline and see the similarities and uh, the differences so thank you for watching this video